Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, today I would like to continue um, overview of uh, uh, ordinary differential equations. Um, this lecture is part of the uh, relatively comprehensive course of advanced mathematics for teenagers presented on unizor.com. I do suggest you to uh, view this lecture from the website because it provides um, notes for every lecture, very detailed notes. You can use it as a textbook and also there are certain exams um, and the site is completely free. There are no advertisements, so just use it. Um, okay, now, uh, the previous lecture was dedicated basically to introduction to what ordinary differential equations are. Um, we were considering them ordinary because uh, we would like to distinguish them from um, functions of ma many arguments, more than one argument. So ordinary is th for the functions of one argument. Um, it's differential equations, obviously, because the uh, derivative of that function is present in the equation. Uh, and finally, I would like to concentrate, at least for now, um, for this particular lecture on uh, differential equations of the first order, which means that in my equation there are x, y, and derivative of y present, where y is unknown function of x. And my equation might be actually looking something like this. This is a general form of ordinary differential equation of the first order. And I'm not going to solve it, <laughs> because it's a very general form, and in a very general form we cannot really do anything. It's like w w with algebraic equations, um, you can certainly solve equations of the first and the second order. The third is kind of a problem. Um, starting from the equations of the fourth order, it's really very difficult. And if you have certain functions put into this uh, equation, like trigonometric function, exponential, logarithm, etc., then forget about general kind of a solution. So there are solutions in, cer in certain particular cases. And today I would like actually to concentrate on three major uh, cases with uh, ordinary differential equations of the first order, uh, which can be solved. Now, in algebra, when we were talking about equations, we were talking about polynomial equations or trigonometric equations or logarithmic equations. So we were differentiating uh, by what kind of functions are involved in the equation. In this particular case, I would like to differentiate equations not by what kind of functions participate in it, but how they can be solved. So I'm differentiating them by methodology of solving them. Now, in the introductory previous lecture, actually, uh, we were considering a couple of cases when we were separating uh, uh, x from y in the same equation and basically relatively easily obtained uh, a solution. So this is actually the first and probably the easiest um, type of uh, differential equations which can be solved and we know how it can be solved. So let me just give you one relatively general explanation. So if this particular um, equation can be represented as function of y times dy equals function of x times gx, where y is dy by dx, obviously. So if we can represent this function in this format, then we can talk about separation of arguments. So y is on the left, x is on the right, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. But now we can uh, uh, apply uh, indefinite integrals to both of them. So if these are two infinitesimals, right? They are infin infinitesimals, and they are equal 
in the sense that the difference is an infinitesimal of a higher order, then we can integrate them and we will get the uh, equality. So, just one particular example, y plus xy equals to zero. We can separate them. xy goes to the right and we will divide by y, so we will get y divided by y equals minus x, right? Now, um, since the uh, derivative of y is this, I can write it as dy divided by y equals to dx goes here. Now I can integrate both of them and I will get logarithm uh, y, well actually it's absolute value of y, but let's just concentrate on positive x and y uh, equals to um, minus one half x squared, right? The derivative of x squared is 2x, so 2 will cancel and minus stays. And then I need any constant on the left and on the right, or I can combine them together, to will be only on the right, from which y is equal to e to the power minus x squared plus c, or sometimes it's expressed as e to the power of c, which is another constant, c1, times e to the power of x squared divided by 2. That's the same thing. Since c is a, any constant, well, this becomes actually positive, but again, we are not dealing with delicate uh, nuances uh, of these equations. My point right now is to get to a solution somehow. And then we can obviously spend some time to analyze when the solution exists, when it doesn't exist. That's, that's the whole theory, which I would like actually to stay away from. All right, so this is the method of separation of uh, function and argument, y from x. So this general equation of uh, the first order, if it can be transformed into this case, without integrals. Then we can apply integrals and that means that we have integrated or solved the equation and this is the solution. Our purpose is to find the function which satisfies the equation, right? Well, obviously I should actually check this answer, but let's assume that I did the checking and you should. <laughs> I might actually skip it just for time saving. All right, fine. So that's my first relatively simple uh, type of equations. Uh, we call them separable and we know how to solve them. It's all predicated obviously on the ability, on our ability to separate x from y into different um, uh, sides of the equation and then we can integrate it. Well, not always it's possible, right? So we are considering a couple of more cases when we know how to approach uh, the problem. And I guarantee that there are many, many uh, differential equations which do not fall into any one of these three categories which I'm going to describe today. And then, well, either you are applying certain numerical methodology or think about maybe something special and interesting and maybe you can guess the solution or something like this. All right, so the next is so-called homogeneous uh, equations. So the first one was separable, the second is homogeneous. Now homogeneous is the following, uh, and I do want to, exam to, uh, to explain it on the example. So let's say you have equation. Well, it's not obvious how to separate these, so let's just assume that it's impossible. Maybe it is possible, but I don't know how. But I do know it is very interesting uh, peculiarity in this particular equation. If I will change x to something like lambda times x, where lambda is just any number, and I will change y into lambda y, my equation would not change, right? Because this will be lambda x divided by lambda y and lambda would 
cancel out. This would be lambda square x square divided by lambda square uh, y square, and again lambda square can be uh, cancelled out. So my equation will remain absolutely the same. So this is a peculiar quality of this particular equation and many other equations. For instance, you can have something like y uh, uh, plus x divided by y equals to e to the power minus x divided by y something like this. It's also x divided by y. Or maybe this cannot be this way. It can be x, but then you can have y here and y here. Which means you can actually have exactly the same thing, but it's not obvious uh, that it's explicitly depend on x divided by y. But it's still the same thing. If I will replace y with x y, with lambda y, and x with lambda um, uh, x, these lambdas will cancel out and these lambdas also cancel out. So it's exactly the same type of equation. So we are assuming that this is possible. So if this is possible, so after um, substitution from x lambda x and from y lambda x, my equation will not change like in this particular case. Then there is a special methodology to solve these equations. And this special methodology is the following. Since x divided by y plays such an important role, let's just introduce a new function. And I will convert this equation in terms of x and y into equation in terms of x and z and that would probably be simpler I mean I hope that this will be simpler because this ratio seems to be important in this particular case it's kind of a universal right well let me see if it helps so what can I say about y is equal to x times z y derivative is equal to derivative of the first times derivative uh, derivative of the first times the second which is z because derivative of x is one right plus x derivative of z okay so we can substitute it here and we will have z plus x z prime z derivative plus x divided by y is 1 over z x squared divided by y squared is 1 over z squared so this is my new equation is it better than the original one? yes, and here is why because we can always separate z times x equals to minus z minus 1 over z minus 1 over z square. Now z derivative is, as we know, dz by dx. So we can put dz here and dx and x will stay here and we will flip uh, to get reverse. Uh, I will use minus here dz z plus 1 over z plus 1 over z square so we have separated so you see that particular equation even if it's not separable by itself it will become separable after this type of substitution so as long as you know that the equation is homogeneous which means if you multiply x uh, by lambda and y by some number lambda lambda will cancel out it will be exactly the same equation then you can use this technique so technique is instead of resolving by y um, and, uh, and, and, and x in this particular case you transform the whole thing in terms of z and x solve it for z and as soon as you get the solution for z because this is supposed to be integrated and I'm not going to do it but obviously it, 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 it is already as simple as it can be 
whenever you are reducing your differential equation to just a bunch of integrals that's it I mean that's the maximum you can do if you can do it fine if you can't do it well too bad you can just leave it as is but it's still better than the original equation and then after you find z you calculate y by multiplying by x that's it so that's the approach which you're uh, using so again my purpose is to characterize a, a, a differential equation with certain quality in this in particular ca case it's uh, homogeneity and then suggest a methodology how to solve this particular equation in this case it's this particular technique and now I have the third type of equation which where, where I can actually suggest the methodology of solving so let's assume our equation is not um, separable and it's not homogeneous and you can actually try first you can try for separability then you can try for homogeneity and then there is a third it's not like everything else it's just one more type of equation which I can recommend you how to solve it and there are a ton of others which I cannot all right so this one is called linear non-homogeneous non well basically the general uh, format of this is this where f g and h some functions well the first thing which can be actually done to simplify it we can divide it by f at x and we will get something like y plus g divided by f I will put u of x it's a known function right f g and h are known functions it's part of the equation so uh, their ratio is also known and h divided by f I put v of x so I will consider this particular um, equation so how to solve now why is it called linear well because it's linear by y and y uh, derivative you see it's not y derivative square or, or y square here not, not nothing like this it's just a, a linear form of y uh, of y and a derivative of y okay now here is the methodology which which I can suggest which will bring you the results well it will bring you to the moment when you can just write some integral uh, which represents the solution if you can take it in explicitly like a function it's good if not it's not so bad as well it's still better than the uh, equation okay so what's the approach approach is the following I will look for a solution in terms of product of two functions now what does it give me well obviously I can write this P times Q P Q right where P and Q some functions so I will transform this equation into a couple of equations where P and Q will will be participating and I will solve them for P and Q correspondingly and then by combining them as a product I will get Y so that's my approach now why is it working in this particular case well here is why let's just um, see what happens here so our um, equation is transformed into the following uh, derivative of Y which is this so it's P times Q prime plus P prime times Q plus u times y and y is so it's this u times p times q now all of them are functions of x I just don't want to write the function plus v equals to zero this is our new equation let me just transform it just a little bit so I will do this I will put p this and this I will combine together and I will have Q plus U Q Q 
plus whatever is remaining. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to find a function q from this expression by equa e equating it to zero. So that's my plan. First, I will find q from this equation, which is very simple, it's a separable equation, right? You can have dq by dx uh, plus uq equal to zero. Uh, uq goes to the right, so it would be minus uh, minus uq. Q goes here, dx goes there, and I have dq divided by q equals to minus u as a function, known function of x times dx. So I can integrate both of them, it's a separable um, equation. So that's my first thing. That would, if I can find the su such a solution, it would bring this identically to zero. So this whole thing is, would be identically to zero if I will find solution to this equation. Now, as soon as I found this, so q now is a known function. I will do the next step. So since q is a known function, I will find a solution to this, which is also a separable equation, right? q is known, now we, ha we have found it, v is known as well. So it's basically like p is equal to minus v over q, this is dp by dx, so dx goes here, and we have a separable equation uh, for p. And that's how I find the function uh, p. Now, known q and known p, I get my y from here. So this is approach. Is it always working? Well, not necessarily. Maybe this is such an equation which never actually uh, has a solution or something like this. But this is an approach. And you can definitely try to do that. So, three um, most likely occurring cases where you really can solve something. Maybe they're happening uh, in the real life, maybe they're happening on exams, whatever it is, but you probably would be given uh, equations to solve. Um, I don't know, 90% of the cases would be one of these three. And... Um, knowing the methodology how to solve each one of these three types and let me just repeat first was the separable uh, equation the second was homogeneous uh, when we were replacing instead of y um, uh, we were using uh, uh, z times x and the third one was linear where we are using the product of two functions to um, to solve the equation for y. So these are three methodologies, three types of equations, um, which uh, I think is very helpful to, to know. Now next lectures, I will try to concentrate um, on each of those guys and have some examples. Basi basically, next three lectures will be dedicated to these three types of uh, uh, ordinary differential equations. I will just try to solve as, as much as, as possible, the time allows basically, right? So the next lectures will be separately for separable, for um, homogeneous, and for linear differential equations. So far, that's it for today. Thank you very much. I do recommend you to read uh, notes for this particular lecture on unizor.com. That's part of the calculus, ordinary differential equations. Then they have overview. This is part of the overview. Um, so look at the website. It's uh, very helpful. As I was saying, it's like a textbook. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.